guys welcome back and uh, today we're going to resume from where we stopped at in the previous video and remember so let me first set this uh, clock and let it start working counting for exactly one hour okay Musa is joining I'll let him in okay so last time uh, we stopped at uh, whereby we wanted to not make errors and uh, yes man good morning morning how please 10 minutes i just want to complete your video please no follow along follow along no, no, no. if i also follow me, along <laughs> follow no, along just, just few minutes for me i'll be back it's up to you anyway yeah, yeah, I, I will. So, okay, uh so man we're recording a video man let us continue with business first first follow <laughs> leave, leave musa who will join later so try to follow here yesterday I was trying to create a, an SQL that will be generating for us the insert logic. And when we're inserting a log we're inserting a, when we're creating that SQL, we realize that sometimes the user may provide the columns that don't exist in that table. So we're trying to find a way how we can make sure that uh, before we create the SQL, we'll first check if the column that the user has provided in an array is really existing in a what in a table. That's what we were trying to do yesterday, and it was so complicated. But uh, I think I've got a way how we can do it. Because you remember yesterday, we were able to select the column using this SQL. Select all from information schema uh, dot columns. Then you put the table. Then here, what it did, it could get for us all the tables which are having that particular name. For example, you see here when I try to refresh, it gets for us all the tables that are having uh, the name of uh, that are having the name of users oh, from all the databases okay so that is the problem that we got yesterday but what we want to do we want to get only the names of uh, of a what of a of columns in a particular database that you are working with that what we want to do so I've tried to dump here everything that we've got from where from uh, from the database and I've realized that um, in these columns I've realized that in these columns still there is a, a way how they are specifying the schema you see everything that you, they provide here they specify a specific database which is the schema for example this is a Shamim project they're having a table of users and they drop they're bringing all their columns so every table that has from the whole database in case there's any table of that particular name from the whole database to be brought so it is a, a problem so the what how we're going to solve it we are going to be specifying a particular schema or the particular database so because you see here they are providing us the database name you can see here they are providing us the database what the database name here the schema name you can see here this is a different schema this is a different schema and even the schema that you're not working with, that's the problem that you're finding. So what we're going to do, we are going to specify here this second thing. The first thing that we're specifying here, it was what? It was table. So we are supposed to add an and and specify the database. So that came uh, to that that came up to my brain like um, we need to define the database, uh, the database name that you're going to use in our project in the what in the global variable we want to define it to make, to make it a, defi a, a, defi a defined variable so that we should be able to access it everywhere in the what in the functions other than passing it every time so what i'm going to do i'm going to define here the what the database name you see fact you see here we're working with the word uh, this is the database that we're using so what i want to do here i want to define it so that we should be able to do what to access it everywhere do you get my point mm, yes okay so i'm going to define so I'll just say define that it should be a constant so this one i can call it db underscore name okay so this constant i'll be able to access it everywhere in my functions so in this db name i'm going just to be putting here new check so here it means that if i define this constant i can remove this here so once i remove it i just put this one here then mean that um, when you even change this project and put it to the internet we will only change this what will only change this uh, database name here and the whole project will be updated 
that is the best practice that we can do. Uh, we can even define here DB password, okay, DB pass, okay, and then here we just remove this. Of course, our password is nothing, so we put there the empty array, I mean the empty query, and do like this, DB has. Aha, uh -huh, this local host, we can leave it, uh, just we can leave it, and the root, maybe DB user, DB user, database user, that is important. So we can uh, change this one, okay. So when we move this project to another project, okay, here of course we have to define root. When you move this project to another database, it will be simple for us. We just change only this and the whole database will be updated. Do you get my point? Fatma, do you get my point? Yeah. Okay, very good. So, so it means that I have this database name here defined. So it means that if I come to this function, I can go ahead and specify here the database okay so I select the table name and I put the second condition and so I put and database I mean uh, data database name is got I mean uh, and so I'm going to put here a uh, schema where there's word schema you know here this is the schema this is the database you see schema name is the database the specific database so I'm not going to select all the users tables but I'm going to select from what from the specific schema so i'll add here and i put this schema is equal to i'm going to specify the schema already it's a what it's a public variable here uh it's a, uh, a defined variable which is a db name and the schema name is equal to so i have to surround it with what with these uh double quotes i mean these single quotes and then i don't know whether uh what a, a defined variable can also be accessed like this. Let us see. Let us see. So let me die with this SQL here. Die. I don't know, but let us check. Uh -huh. So SQL refresh. So you see, uh, it cannot be defined like that. Okay. Only the variables that can, that are having the dollar sign around that can define like this one. So this one we cannot define it. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to break this. Uh, SQL like this and I put dot okay and then I attach there the the uh, this uh, database name okay so our SQL will look like this you see select all from schema columns where column I mean table name is equal to users and we specify the table name at the same time we specify the what the database name you see so there it will bring only the names of the column in a particular table of a particular table in a particular database that is the problem that we are facing so i'm going to see what we're going to get here so i'm going to dump here everything here you see everything that i get i just dump it i refresh now now you can see the number of columns have done what have reduced so if you want to get the specific columns, of course, it is in array, and then it is in this one, column one, column name. So if I come and dump here, like specifically column name, you can see that you're going to get only the column names of the database that we defined. That is what we wanted, not to get everything that you are doing what, that, we are, that, that was on the database. So I'm going to get these columns and push them to this array this is how we push okay instead of writing uh, in php 7 instead of writing array push like this you can and then you put here the array and do like this here in php 7 you can simply push them like this do you see you just write your array and then you put this square bracket with empty and then you put what you want to push there did you understand that can you repeat that again fat do you, do you get this point no, I say, you know, I want to push. I want to push this. Are you getting my it's point? Yes, yes. You want to push it. I'm, I want to push these variables in this what? In these columns. Yes. Uh huh. In the in the in this array. So instead of using this array push, mm -hmm. array push, like yeah. uh, array push. This yeah. one is uh, complicated. So in PHP seven. You can just put this square bracket like this. It will automatically push them for you. 
So you see, I loop here, I push them all here. La now let me dump them here after the loop. So I'm going to show you what has happened. So if I dump them after the loop, see? Can you see? All the table, all the columns have been pushed here. You understand? Yes. Uh -huh. So that is why we needed this to specify this schema. Let me show this one and you see. I remove the specification of the schema. Can you see? So many columns. All the columns that are having table of users. So that is very bad. So you have to specify the what? The schema. So by doing like this, then you'll have the specific table names in a specific what? In a specific database. So this one is going to help us to avoid uh, writing the SQL that does not exist. I mean putting the names of a column that does not exist in a what? In an SQL. That will be very, very helpful. So I'll just return these calls. Okay? So I'll return these calls. Remember this get table names, columns. It is just helping us to get the, the names of a what? Of columns in a certain table. So I'll just go back to where I call these functions. Here. You see? Column names. So you see here I was checking. If the column does not exist, if the key does not exist in these column names, you see? I've just got them here. If the key does not exist in these column names, I just say continue. Ignore that. Okay? So let me show you how it helps us. Let me show you. If I echo here the data, let me dump here the data. Just say printer and I dump the data. You will see that we, we sent, for example here in this column, there is no name. There is no variable called name. But you have first name and second name. But you see, here we have already sent the name variable. And this one, if we don't check for that, we will find that that name has been put here. But if you see our SQL, we don't have the name. Why? Because we changed, we checked it here in case... That name does not exist, we skip it. So that will help us from doing such uh, errors. Did you understand? Did you understand that? Yeah. Very good. Uh, so the very, very last thing is uh, to remove um, the SQL, uh, the SQL uh, I injection. Okay? So we are going to escape the SQL. You know, sometimes the user can be stubborn and send the data which is having names like um, apostrophe. You know that, that, that problem, I think you already know that problem, okay? Yeah. yeah, you already know that problem. So I'm going to do what? Before we push the value or before I touch the value, I'll be first escaping its what? It's the uh, SQL. I mean, I'll be first escaping uh, the, 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 the rows. So to escape those rows, you just simply come to to where? To I'm going to search my SQLI escape string. I don't know it in the head, so this is the one that we use. This one, so it escapes the strings like this one. You just uh, say my SQLI. How do you use it? Let me copy this one and then. I'll use it from here. So before we add the value, before we add the value, we'll first escape it, okay? So before I add the value, we'll first escape it. So this is our, this is the function, how it works. Let me explain it. So you just simply put the value. So our value here is going to be here. Uh, and we call this connection. This is the connection. And then write my SQL string escape. My SQL string escape, and then you pass the what? The value itself. Okay, which is so I can remove this garbage. So by doing like that, we'll be free from strings, from dangerous strings. Okay, we'll be free from dangerous strings. Okay, so before I add it, I first escape it. Before I add it, I first escape it. So I put it on on the first, on the second. So by doing like this, we'll be free from. Uh, those kind of errors. So it will s escape for us the string. That's the function that my SQL. Oh, this connection variable is it not global? Okay, it is a global variable. So we have to first uh, access it, right? We have to first access it, you know? It is here. And I told you if you want to access it in a what? In a variable, you just simply write the word global, if you still remember. Global. If you want to access a global variable in a private function, in a function, just write global. And put the, the the semicolon like that, then it should be accessible. You see, everything is okay.
Now let us try to test and see if this uh, escape works. So I'll come and say my name is Muhindo Mubarak. So you see, I have put apostrophe. Can you see that, Fatmat? I've put that uh, a colon, right? I mean the, the apostrophe. So let us see if it will be escaped. I sign up. Mm -hmm. Let us uh, see where there is my name. So can you see? It has been escaped. Otherwise, if we didn't do this, this would be problematic. So that's beautiful if you've understood it. So we'll just continue, right? So after doing that, I think our SQL is now ready to be executed. Okay? It is now ready to be executed. And this SQL will be able to do what? To insert the data for us. Let me explain it just one more time. First of all, we get the global connection here. And then here we create the response. The response and the message. This response and the message, it will help anyone or any function that calls this function. We'll be telling it if things were successful through the code. And then we'll be telling the explanation through the what? Through the message. This function will help to explain everything uh, that calls it. So you see here, the first thing that I see, uh, that I check, for example, this function, it will be creating the SQL to insert in any kind of a table. The first thing that I do, I check if the user has provided, or anyone who has called this function, if he has provided the what? The, the, the table. If he did not provide the table, we set the code to be zero and return that the table name was too short. So we, we, we stop the function from here by sending back the response. So he will know the reason why it, it failed. We check also, he must provide the data. So if the data is empty, then we'll just send back that, hey, the data was what? Was empty, and then we return back the solution, the code as zero. Then after, we put here the array of keys and the array of what? I mean uh, the, the, the string of keys, the string of values. And then after, we get the columns of this particular table that the user has set. Because he can set the data, he can send to us the data with the names of the columns that are not really existing in our database. So I create the function that will be getting the names of the columns that are existing in a table of a certain database. So that's the function that I created here and I explained this logic so I don't need to repeat it. Let me remove this echo thing. And then it will return the columns of a certain table that we've done what? That uh, we have in our database. So I'll have these columns here. Then after, I know that, uh, you know that we're not supposed to have a comma at beginning of uh, values. So I have to check if the first thing has been reached. And if uh, it has been reached, I'll change this one as true. And if it has not reached, I'll, change, I'll leave it as false. So I check if the first point is reached, I'll just add the comma before I concatenate the value of keys and the value of the value itself. And then before I, I, I put the value itself, I have to first escape the what? The MySQL. And then after, I put the comma itself. Uh -huh. Then I do the same for the keys. And here, if the first thing is reached or the first item is reached, I'll set this first item to be true so that next time you should not do this again. Okay? And you see in the first item, I don't put the comma because in the first item, we're not supposed to have a what? We're not, have to, we're not supposed to have a comma. So by doing like this, we are coming up with this SQL. So I mean this SQL can be, can be used in our project to insert in any table that we want. That is very, very, very powerful. And we can use this, S, this function to any kind of a what? To any kind of a table. That's really, really great function. Okay? So let's go ahead and do what? And uh, execute this SQL. Unless there's a question, members. Fat, do you have any questions so far? Here. Fatma, do you have a question? No, I'm not You're getting it? Eh? Yes. Very I was talking about my manager as well. Okay, that's good. So if you're getting now, let us execute this SQL. So to execute the SQL, we just simply put if this SQL, of course, you have to attach it to what? To this connection where we put the global. So if connection uh, query, this connection will return true or false if it executes properly. So if it executes properly, I can die that success okay just to test before i return success and uh, here i can say else
failed okay so I let me refresh oh so you can see here let me okay output success and fail I deleted the success <laughs> success and fail okay refresh and let me remove this echo the SQL itself so I refresh success so in this access I'll have to update this response right I have to update this response so I have come here in the success section and make the code to be what to be one okay so that the user will be checking the I mean the one who calls this function will be checking if the code is one or not so I can say uh, data was inserted success data was inserted successfully and then here in case it fails uh, I'll just duplicate this code and come here and keep it back to what to zero and said data I mean fail to insert data fail to insert data so this SQL can work on any kind of a table that's very very beautiful and then at the end we we'll return what we we'll turn the response return response that is very great SQL okay I mean a very great function so let us go back to be insert here you see here this way we call it from uh -huh. so we can have this data okay or we can have a response is equal to db insert now let us echo the response and we see if uh, things are still working okay so I have to echo the pre tag and just do it and just dump this and die okay so refresh perfect everything is okay so that is done the insertion is done the insertion so before we proceed now this is the registration function of a what of a user so we have to check if the, there is another user with same email before we register that particular user right is Musa there what as fat you know that you know that we cannot just insert okay it's not good to just insert before we check if there's another user with what with the same email so you have to check right uh -huh. so this is the function that is going to do all that logic of registration so we're going to put that logic of checking before we insert so this insert it can come later but we'll put it after checking okay so after we get the email of course we have the email here so I'm going to write the function that will be getting the user data so we have the email we have the email here where's the table I mean this is the, the, the register table uh -huh. so I'm going to create um, the what the, the the get user data okay or get user so I'm going to create that function because we have to check the user before we do what before we register them okay so to get the user I mean to create that function of getting the user uh, sometime we may need to create to get the user by 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 email sometime we may need to get them by phone number sometime we may need to get the users by by what by their username so those are three things so do we need the question is do we need uh, to write three different functions get user by username get user by email get user by password that is a uh, hectic of course it is hectic so I'm going to make a logic it's going to be so complicated but it will be simple uh, still but that logic will help us I'm going to make a logic that uh, we're going to write to one particular function and it will help us to get a user by anything by name by username by password by anything so that function is going to be powerful and you should learn how to create such functions that can be dynamic and you can just be telling them to do anything for you so instead of writing a separate function of getting user by username get user by password get user by anything we should be able to I'm going to create a function that will be able to do anything for us we can get user by username we can get user by password so I'm going to write this function okay let us see how we can write it 
So uh, at first thing we are going to do what? We are going to write the function. <laughs> of course we are going to write the function. Okay, so let us write the function itself. So I'm going to put it down here. Okay. So first of all, it's going to be called get what? Get user. Get user. So I don't want to write three functions. I don't want to repeat myself. At much I don't know whether, whether you're getting my point. I just want to write one function that I will not repeat myself. Get user by email. Get user by password. Get user by what? I'm going to write, I want to ask to write the one function that will be dynamic for everything. Do you get the point? Yes. Very good. So this function, to do a function like this one, we need an array. We need an array. But this array, it by default, is how it is initialized to nothing, okay? So I'll need an argument with a what? With array. So first of all, in this array, I'll be expecting uh, someone to pass the argument and whatever he passes, it should be having uh, one of the column and the what and the value. So, for example, if someone calls this function, he should create for us arguments like this one. You see, I've commented this one for inserting. We have finished it. So, I'm going to, we have the email already. The email is somewhere here. We have the email, right? The email, the email, the email. Of course, the email is here, right? It is here. We, we got it. Before, we, you know how to check it, okay? So I'm going to create here uh, the arguments that I'm going to pass to this what to this function. But this function is expecting what an array. So you can either send an array or you don't send anything. That's what you expect. So at first thing, it would say you have to give it what an array. Okay. So I'm going to create maybe I'm going to create an array. I'll call maybe user arguments. Okay. And this array, um, I, I need to get the user by what? By the email. Okay? So I'll have to pass here the key as what? As email. So this email is going to be passed in this array. Okay? This email is going to be touched in this array. Like this. So I'm going to send the what? The email like this one. Okay? So to do that, I'm going to call this function get user get user and i'm going to give it the what the arguments that i've just created okay so this one goes to be what an array and remember these arguments are just optional okay because uh this one you can see it is it is not there okay i mean it is um uh, an array it's already initialized here so i'm putting this argument of this array i mean this email in this argument you, you see how i've done it okay so the key is email and the value is the email itself. So I'm calling the user get user here. Let me just dump here the arguments themselves. Okay. So I'm going to dump here the argument. So I'm just going to put here printer. And then let me die. So you're going to see the argument. refresh can you see the argument is the email and the value of the email okay so this one it means that if the user wants if we want to get the user by username we can just simply put here username like this and then you can get the user by what by the username so by doing like that we are going to write now the condition we are going to write the what the condition so the condition is just going to check uh, I could write um, uh, a what an SQL that can combine different conditions, but uh, for this user, I'm going to keep it just simple. I'm just going to write for this for one for one just only one condition. But when we maybe we 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 make uh, the what we make uh, for example the the query for getting the products, we'll make for multiple conditions. So I'm going to write the what the condition. So the condition is going to be, uh, first of all, I'm going to, ch to get the names of this table, okay? Of course, the names of this table. So bec because we have to check this query, if the user provided the correct name, okay? If this user provided this correct name. So I'll first check if these arguments are not empty, okay? So by default, 
my condition i'm going to write just a condition okay my condition will be maybe mm, one like this like where one because where one it will always be true so that's going to be my just con my si simple condition so i'm going to check now i'm going to change this condition in case there's a what there is something so i'm going to check first if uh these arguments are not empty okay if these arguments are not empty then i have to loop through them okay so I write just for each loop and pass here the argument and pass here maybe an argument name so here we're having two things okay we're having the key and the value the key and the value of course you know what that the key the key holds this and the value holds this and we're expecting the user or anyone who calls this function to provide us the name of the column of his condition you should put it in a key and the value here so if i echo here like this you see i echo here maybe key you can see the key is equal to okay and i can put here comma and say value oval is equal to like this so can you see we now have this simple loop the key which is the email and the value which is the real value but just like the way i told you we cannot trust that uh, if we are to make a complex project we cannot trust that every email that they will i mean every key that will be provided for us it is existing in a what in uh, our table so if we, that we cannot trust that then we have to first check if this key is existing in our what in our table so i'll simply come and do what and get the names of what i mean and get the columns here you know we have written this table i mean this function that can get for us uh the column name so we can reuse it that's very beautiful so i'll come here and get the what the table columns okay i first get the table columns so i have them here so these table columns i have them here so before i write the ch i change this condition i'll have to first check if this key is in what is in these table columns so i'll just put again another condition if in array in array is a function that searches a certain value in a what in an array so i'll just search if this key is in the array so in this stack i'll put the what the keys then i should be able to do what to write the condition because this key has been found in a, as a what as a column in our table so i'll write for now for now i'll put only the single condition i'll not accept multiple condition but when you create a a complex function like get products will put multiple condition okay so we may not even need to loop but no problem so i'm going to check in case it is existing then i'll have to check the, to change this what this condition so the condition is going to be is going to be uh is going to be what is going to be uh <laughs> is going to be what is going to be the key where the key is equal to i have to put like this and i put the what the value which is here in a okay i can call it whatever i want here in a so i put space at the end that it should not be attached to other things okay so that is our simple condition so let me die with this condition or let me echo this condition here so that's how we write powerful functions members so let me refresh can you see oh, oh oh table we've not defined table of course table is what is called users okay you just simply put here users of course we are defining we are getting from what from the table of users so refresh can you see where one <laughs> so what is why is it not being added if the key is in array Mm, why is it, why is the condition not added okay let us see let us find out let us first make sure that we have correct tables i mean the correct columns so it's going to be printer and refresh 
Yes, the columns have come. Do you have a column of email in this table? No. You see what I was saying? That's the whole problem. We don't have a column of email. Then how was it able to insert successfully? It's because uh, it was able to insert successfully is because we checked the columns, of course, before we insert. So let's manually include that uh, that column of email, okay? So it's going to be localhost stroke PHP my admin. You see, don't have the column of email. So otherwise, our our, our, pro our project would have crashed. Okay. So I'll come to new chick. New chick. I'll come here to what? To users. I'll come here to structure. I'll have to put what? To put a uh, email. We don't have email. <laughs> How did you forget that? I'll have to add a what? An email column. Just simply put email. Okay. And you can change this one to variable character of maybe 100. There's no email which is more than 100. Okay, that's beautiful. So if you refresh here, you see, we've got email. And you see, our condition has changed. Can you see that? Members, can you see that? Yes. Okay. But uh, I hope you, you, you're you relating, even though you don't understand the logic straight away. But I hope you're trying to get the point, right? Yes, I do. Okay, very good. Hadi, are you trying to relate? <laughs> you might have not got it exactly, but are you trying to relate, Hadi? I think it's Musa. Who are you calling, Hadi? <laughs> I'm dreaming, Hadi. <laughs> so that's it, eh? Musa, are you getting the point? Yeah, I just dreamed. Okay. So, so you can see our. That's how we can make actually great functions. Qua we will not repeat ourselves, and you'll find this one to be very, very helpful. So you have the condition now. So even if I remove, by default the condition is nothing, is one. And in case there's a condition, then we update this one. So we have the condition. So let's go ahead. I'm going to create also an SQL. I mean a function. <laughs> Actually, in these first videos will be the uh, the creation of functions. And but this function will find them so 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 helpful because they will help us to do the remaining part very simply. So I'm going to create another function that will be getting for us a table, table data. Whereby we'll be calling just this function get for us table or get data or get table. The other one was uh, insert into table. Okay, db insert. Okay, this one you can call db get or table get table. This one it will help us to get data from any kind of table. That is beautiful. Instead of writing every time the SQL all the time, we can just write only one function. We give it the name of a table and the condition. And then it will get for us the data from this particular table. That will be very, very, very great. So let's do it, okay? So we are done with this DB insert. So I'm going to write another function. It's going to be get get table, right? So this function will find them very helpful. So this uh, is going to call. To, we are going to call it DB get table, <laughs> okay? It's about database that's called data, data DB. So at first it will expect the what? Of course, the table, and then it will expect the what? The condition. Okay, which condition should it follow? So it will be condition. Okay, so by condition I can put maybe one because the condition of one is always true. So in case the user does not provide any condition, we'll put the condition of one. And then the last thing that you can put is the order. Which order should you follow? Order by what? Okay. So we can do also that. Let's put here order. Okay. So order is nothing. Okay. So those that is the condi. I mean uh, that, that that's that's uh, the, the, the 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 main three things that we may need. So we begin by first checking if the table is nothing. Then we'll have to return that you do not provide for us the table. So how can you get you the data? So these things are going to be just like this part of the SQL. So I'll zoom here so that you can see properly. So you see, I have the global connection. 
I have the response 0 and the message why. So the first thing, if the table is empty, I will go back and say, hey, you did not provide for us the table. You did not provide us the table. Uh -huh. So if the condition is empty, the condition, I don't mind because it is nothing. And also the order, I don't mind. Let me not make the thing so, so, so uh, complex. So the order, I don't mind. And the condition, I don't mind. Okay? Because the condition is nothing. So after, I'll have to write the what? Uh... The SQL, right? I'll have to write the SQL. Uh -huh. So, oh, I can as well, I can as well accept the conditions to be, okay, let's leave the condition will be uh, doing them from up here. But I wanted to put this logic of conditions here so that, uh, let, let us put it here, let us put it here because let us put it here so that we will be, we will be just doing that only one time other than uh, repeating ourselves all the time. So this condition, let it be also an array, so that this logic that we've done here, we should put it in this function of what? Of selecting, so that we should not repeat ourselves. So I'll simply come and uh, copy this. Okay, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to explain it. So here I checked only the table. If the table is there, no problem. So this condition is going to be what? An array. An empty array. By default, I'm going to call it conditions. Okay. So after, I'll have to now check the condition. I'm going to do the logic of condition. I'm just, I've just cut it from here. I'm going to put it here. So the co you have conditions and condition. So the conditions is the, is the array, okay? The condition is now the condition itself. So I get the conditions here, and then I get uh, the table. Now, since this is a, is a function that is going to work on every table, so I don't need to specify here a particular table. So I'll remove this guy and put this table that has been provided, okay? So this table, after getting the table, uh, the columns of that table, I then create this condition. So instead of looping through arguments, I'm going to loop through the conditions here. So in case the conditions are not empty, I'm going to loop through these conditions like that. Okay, I'm going to loop through these conditions. Like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. I think everything I'd already explained it, okay? So I hope here everything is okay. So let us call this function and see if it functions properly. Okay. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to echo the what? The condition. And see if the condition was created successfully. So I'm going to die here like this. So this function, it will be called get user. Uh, what it will do, it will just call also get da uh, table data. It's going to be get table data. And it's going to provide it, the first parameter is going to be the table. Of course, the table is users. And the second parameter is going to be what? It's going to be the conditions. Of course, the condition here, we received them through arguments. So I'm going to pass here the args directly like that. So after, let us see what we'll get. So I've called this table of get user. Okay. So, or I can call it get users. So that it should be like uh, general let me put it here get users so here the table of get users is also calling the table of get uh, db get table so let us see if everything is working properly refresh everything is working perfect perfectly okay so now have to write the what you have to write the sql so i mean that this 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 table can be used to write to get any data from any what from any condition with I mean from, from it can be used to get any data from any table that's very great powerful table so now we have to do what to write uh, the, the condition I mean we have to write the, the SQL okay so in case we want to escape something with the escape we can also as well escape here before we, we, we put this into the condition we can do what we can first escape it that's also another better way. Here we're referring it to as A. 
So I put here my A and put here my A. So we first escape it. Eh? Uh -huh. So now I have write the condition. I'm um, now have write the SQL. So SQL will be select all from. So what are you passing? We are passing the table. Of course, the table has been provided. Select all from what? From the table. And then we put where. And then we pass the what? The condition. So in, in case they did not provide the condition, the condition will be 1. In case there is a condition provided, it will be updated here. So where? The condition like this. Boom. So by doing like that, then you have successfully written the SQL. Let us see if the SQL is okay. I'll first die with the SQL. Refresh here. The SQL is okay. Where? The condition, where? Wh wh what went wrong? Select all from users where? Oh, we did not put the condition. <laughs> this is supposed to be inside, right? It's supposed to be inside here. Where the condition? Ah, so refresh. Select all from users where the condition. So it means that if you pass username, it will get for us using the username. If you pass password, it will get for. So this is a dynamic function that can get any data from any table. So after we have to do what to run the query. So to run the queries, we are going to just put simply put uh, response or result. A response. Well, I've went. I've went to use this one. This is called a resp. This is response. Okay, resp. This is response. So res response is going to be. Response is going to be. Is going to be what? It's going to be a connection, and then we pass the what? The query. Okay. So we just pass the SQL here. That's how you can make powerful function members. It's boring, but you will enjoy these functions once you learn how to make such functions. So I get the the response. So I have to loop. I've done something like this. I have to loop. I've done something like this, so I don't need to do it again. Okay. So that is the response, and I can just simply loop like this. I can put here say data. Okay. So I'll loop. I'll loop through this response here, like this. For which I mean, I can say maybe row, because these are just rows row and i look through the response as i'm fetching the asshole okay let me first see what is in inside the row before i add it in a what in the data you see this data is uh, just an empty array so let me uh, just dump it printer and see what is going on there uh oh we are dying somewhere did i save yes uh-huh okay the response is empty because there's no any user with the what with this email okay so let us uh, just at least insert one user just for the sake of what of uh, for the sake of uh, testing i'll refresh like two times that should have like two users that is one time two time three time okay so let us see the response okay refresh can you see it is just an array an array an array of data okay this beautiful data can you see these are the users with the same email of mobsrxgmail.com so this this response i'm going to attach them on this data okay okay I'll like this is equal to the data I like that beautiful so you have now the data all in one array okay just I'm going to say printer refresh can you see that's our data all the users have been got and this the, the beauty is the beauty here is this function can work on any table so we don't need again to write another select all from this. That's the whole beauty of it. Okay? So that is it. 
Now what else? Now what we are going to do, <laughs> we are going to return this data. But remember, this function is supposed to return uniform data. You know that. Because here, this function, in case it fails, can you see? What does it return? It returns the code and the message. Okay? So in case we return this data, which is not like uh, this uniform, then that function will not be efficient. So let us return. I'm going to create a space in this response and I give it a what? A space of what? Of data. So I'm going to just simply do like this. This is our response. So the code is going to be one in case it reaches here. One like this to show that it was successful. And then I'm going to put here the message. Or instead of message, I'm going to put there the what? The data. Oh, no, but remember the message the user can expect to be string sometimes. But no, we'll be first checking the code. S no. Let us put another variable of data. Okay. Okay, success. Let me just put in the message success. And this third variable, you see, in this array, it's an array. I give what? I give the data that I've got. So in case someone he calls this function, he will expect these things. He will expect the code. If the code is zero, then he knows something went wrong. If the code is one, then he should expect some data in the what? In the array. Then after I return this response. Members, is there anyone confused? Like uh, you're confused. You might not have uh, understood uh, the, the code itself, but relating you should understand what is going on so if you're kind of confused you can ask me please that i do not get at a certain point and i'll repeat musa are you okay are you relating what i'm trying to talk about yes yes you're relating right yeah fat what about you yes okay so you see that's what i've done so now here uh in this get user Remember this get you the one that called that function. Why do I repeat myself? It's because I want to be co is co consistent. Because the get user it can do other things. That's why I first create this specific special function for get user. So I'll just simply put here also response. Of course I'm gonna say I'm expecting a what? A response is equal to and then echo. I mean let me dump and see if things have come successfully here. Printer like this and see if things came okay perfectly you see we we'll have the response and what and the success so in case the response is zero of course we can just return that and tell the user if things are okay or not so since this response is the same as as other responses what i'm just going to do i'm just going to return the response so instead um, i mean this get user get users is being expected to return uh, an array of users okay so here I'm going to ch to say uh, if is set of course the what the data okay if the, in, if it said the data I will not even care about the response if the data is set then I'm going to return the data okay return data like this okay and else i'll return just empty array return an empty array like this in case the data was not found i'll just return an empty array then neither can know okay there was nothing that was found so you see that's how i return so if the data was sent back i return back the data just exactly like the way it was sent if it does not return back i return what the empty array so we go back to a function here aha uh -huh. so yeah we got the user by what by email so i can say user is equal to the the thing is you can reuse these functions in any kind of your php project you can reuse them and you know many php projects we need user management so you can reuse these functions okay that's why you, you see us, we don't mix them into HTML. So here I'm getting users using the user and the email. So I put here users like this, okay? So let me echo and see if the users were good. Let me dump them here. Printer. You 
you can see we have the users aha so what are we doing here we are registering a what we are registering a user so in this user first of all we had to first check if the user is existing with the same email is existing so now here i've got the users so i'm going to check if this array is not empty i will not proceed from here i'll just say the user with same email already exist and i redirect the user back or i'll re i'll return eh? because it is a function so you cannot re redirect in these functions i'm going to return the response that uh, with zero and the message okay so I'm just going to simply check if don't redirect within functions members because this function will use them within APIs with other things so don't redirect so I'm going to check if is what is not empty then I know oh, there's another user with what with same email do you get the point members I'm checking if there is no if there is if this there is if it has returned some users then I'll know Oh, there is some user with what? With some email. And I'm not to proceed from here. I'm just going to return. Do you get the point, members? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to return. You know how I return things? I return the code and the message itself. So I'll return the code and the message. So the code will be zero. I can put here my message by simply saying user with same email already exist mm. and i return immediately without going beyond here okay return okay so before we test this part of course we have uh, we have done what we have uh, already we have already tested the insertion so let us first work on the insertion and know and know that we are done with everything okay so and uh, the third thing here is just going to be now uh, registering the user okay registering the user himself okay so to register the user we just simply say of course we had to ask for what for for insert db insert okay db insert and then we pass the data that was provided and the table that we want to insert to so here in this db insert of course this db insert will return also for us to us an array a message and this message will have a code if it is one then it is it is success if it is zero then it is failed so i'll check if is one okay if the code okay i'll just say if the code is equal to one okay I'll just return user user was user was what was um, I mean user account user account I mean okay I can say you are user account was created suck says flee okay so i'll put here the else part if it is not one then i can just put the response that was returned from the other uh the message that was returned from the insert yeah the message that was returned from the insert eh? you know yeah in the insert would be returning these messages eh? you know it would be returning these messages so i can just put that message directly so that we should be knowing what was the problem when we started so i can return the message that just like the way uh user account was not created successfully because i can put the message okay that was returned the response that returned okay so oh but by the way still this one is not a good idea we have to return the codes eh? we have to return with the code yeah that's the better way we can do things because we, they, we can tell whether it was successful or not using the code okay so if it was if it was successful i'll just return the same message here i'm just going to create the code it will remain 
one and the message is going to be that the user account was created successfully like this that's the better way to return things so that the user I mean the other one who called this function will be knowing the reasons okay so I'll just copy the same here okay so here it will be zero and the okay so it will be zero and the the message should be this one eh? the message should be this one okay like this and then return the response like this mm -hmm. uh -huh. so everything here is perfect so that is our registration account uh, our user creation account okay user creation account okay so we come back now to register okay so expecting the response let us dump here the response and we see refresh perfect user with same email already exist you see perfect just like the way we did so it got blocked from this point so user with same email already exist okay now let me put here some random let me attach something e on this email before i send it so for example i can attach some random what i can attach just some random some random uh things dot equal to rand let me attach some random numbers you're going to finish i think our time is remaining just like two minutes like three minutes okay three minutes will be done okay so i attach some random numbers so this email has been changed right so let's see if it was we say created successfully perfect your account was created successfully <laughs> but uh, the code is supposed to be one right the code is supposed to be one so that we can tell <laughs> So the code is supposed to be one. Oh yeah, this is the reason, eh? You're supposed to put the code and the message. So you put code code. Support be the code and the message. Do you get the point, members? <laughs> Do you get the point? Respond, please. Yes, yes. yes. But there is little thing that I may like to query after the class. Okay, after the class time, then you will ask. Okay, so I refresh. You see, your account was created successfully. Why? Because I'm adding there some random numbers. Refresh. Your account was created successfully because I'm adding some random numbers. Okay, that is very great. Now, if we can, we, we have a created account successfully, let us log in this account. Okay, let us log in the account. I'm just going to log in it from here because do I need to create a function for logging in? I don't need. <laughs> let me just log in from here. In case we need it in future, we'll create it. Okay. So I have the email okay the email is going to be here email just gonna say email okay it's going to be that email that I've just used here there just going to simply do like this okay okay that's the email so I'm going to get the user by what? By email. So so that I should log in that user, okay? I'm going to get the user by what? By email. So first thing, I'll first check if the response code is zero, is one. So if response code is what? Is one. I'll log in the user. Else, I'll redirect the user and tell them that she something went wrong like the account was not created because of a b c d okay so if it is one i'll log in the user first of all since we are going to use session in our functions i mean in our project then that's a start the only let us always start the session okay session start session session start ah, this thing session underscore start like this okay so we'll always start the what the session our time is over almost okay so but I'm finishing at least we should be done with the login user uh, so if the code is one I'll log in the user if it is not one I'll redirect the user I'll, I'll send the message okay so I'm going to create here the function of sending the message okay I'll call it maybe send message or send notice send 
I'm just going to care function that will be sending the messages using sessions. Eh? Send message. Okay. So it will be receiving two things. It will be receiving the message itself and the what? And the uh the 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 the, the, the status. Okay, our time is over. <laughs> you're done, you're done. Just give me two more minutes just to finish this registration and then we'll, I'll leave you. Uh -huh, so we are going to say send here, of course, a uh, session. I think I would already explain this logic. I can just put a maybe message like this. And the first section, I'll put the what? Uh, the message, okay, itself. Okay. And the second one to be the what? The status. And this will be the status. Okay. So this is the send message. Okay. So I'll check here if the message was sent successfully i can just simply put here uh your account okay so here in case it was it was it is zero if it in case it is not one i'll put here uh uh failed to create oh let me just put the message that was re was returned eh? that was returned this response okay you know the, there's a message that was returned to this response so i'm just going to put the message and the status is going to be uh a, a what w error right or warning error like this okay danger <laughs> forgot the okay danger okay and then yeah so that's it the message is going to be the message that was returned here okay and here the danger is going to be the status okay so in case it was successful here i'm going to put here uh, the message and it's going to be success okay these are classes of bootstrap so in case the user fails to create the account i'm going to redirect him to what to register.php i'm going to redirect him uh, redirect him back redirect i mean header redirect him back to register dot php register dot php okay and then i will die here yeah. you have to make sure that you die members okay i'm finishing just <laughs> you know me in your time i'm really really sorry but i'm gonna finish members just be patient for one more minute okay here in case it, f it in case he successfully created the account i'm going to direct this user to the what to the main website okay so I'm just going to direct him to index.php, index.php, okay? And I send, uh, that's it. But uh, here I've not logged in the what? The user. Let me log in the user. Okay, so to log in the user, I'll check if uh, I'll do this logic from here. I'm going to get, get the user. So before, let me first comment this and this. Let me put here, success. I'm finishing just when I finish to log in the user. Failed. Okay. So refresh uh, and find variable response. Of course, here when you're creating the account, you have to put that response here. I just delete it here. Okay. So I have to put this here. Okay. So that's it. So refresh. So we should die with and code call of defined function send message or oh, send message is in functions right we did not save okay refresh perfect success okay so in this success i'm going to log in the user here 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 so how do i get to the user by just simply saying uh user Okay, I can say users because going to get us a, a list of users. And then you have this function of get user by what? By email. So I have to get the user by email. Okay. You see? You have this function, right? So. I just create the arguments. The argument, user arguments. Where I pass the email and the email we have already copied it here from the post. Okay, so I pass the email, and then after uh, after passing the email, after passing the email, I just put here. So here I have a what? 
I have so an array of users, not a single user, but an array of users because we return the array. Okay, but here we expect only a single user. So if I refresh here, you'll see an array of users. You see, it's an array. So I want to only fish out the first user. So if I'm going to just check if uh, I'm going to check if uh, I'm just going to say u is equal to I, I'm not even, I don't need even to check because I've just created this the user is the same email right now so I'm just going to put the the one in position zero okay so I'm getting the one in position zero because I, I they have sent for us so many users so I have this very first I mean so many users so I ha I've got a first user so this user I'm going to put him in a what in a session and there I'll have logged in okay session and then I put just maybe user is equal so I'll be checking for this user session if the user is logged in or not session of user is equal to the user so that's it for today and then I'll have to redirect and I die here with no anything I'll remove these echo pre tags I remove this I will remove this pre tag okay that is okay I'll remove this die with failed okay so that is okay so I send here the message uh, account was created successfully okay and then uh, I get the user from the emails I mean using the email using the function that we created okay and then I get the first user in position zero and then after I redirect the user to index in case it was successful if it was not successful I redirect the user back to the register.php so that is the logic of that of registration so when you watch this video I believe you'll understand this part so let me refresh no any error so that's it for today tomorrow now we'll have to work on what on uh, displaying the messages and continuing from here I am so 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 sorry for taking uh, your more five minutes I'm really sorry and uh, you can understand I hope you can understand as uh, human beings so let us continue from there tomorrow inshallah have a good night members